I had decided I was going to start a game resale business on OfferUp. I had seen channels like Phoenix Resale and thought I could do the same thing. So I started hunting for good deals on retro games. I did find a copy of Code Veronica for the GameCube for like 20 bucks and resold it for 150. After that I thought, this is really working. I did find some deal on PS2 game lots, but the discs were all scratched up. I did some research and was able to resurface the discs and flip a significant profit. I had probably done 30 sales until I had an obstacle, and it was a major one. The situation finally made me quit the resale business. So I got a lead on two PS2 games, Rule of Roses and Haunting Ground, both in mint condition. These titles sell for upwards of $500 each, so I was drooling over adding these titles to my collection. When the offer popped up on my screen, both for $100, I was over the moon. I could make 900 bucks in no time, guaranteed. I just had to get them. Most of the time, a deal this good is going to have some significant damage to the discs. However, there were pictures posted of the disc condition, and they looked to be in perfect condition, with perfect cases and manuals. It was a real score, for sure. So I immediately contacted the seller, and scheduled a meetup that day. The seller sends me the coordinates, and I'm on the way. I gave him a description of what I was driving while I was thinking about it, before I got on the road and forgot. I was just so excited. It was a 60 mile trip, which sucks, but it'll be worth it. I'm about 10 miles away, and they would have to postpone the meeting for 3 hours. Oh great, I thought. So I just finish the drive anyways, and get to town. What am I going to do for 2 hours and 40 minutes? I find a restaurant and get some food. While I'm sitting there, I'm cruising on offer up and find another stack of gems. While I'm eating in this town in the middle of nowhere, I message another seller of rare retro goodness. They give me an address and it's right around the corner. I finish up my food and get in the car. I get to the new seller's house and score a whole bunch of stuff for nothing, including Rule of Rose and Haunting Grounds. This trip was totally worth it. So I have everything I wanted, but I have less than 30 minutes to meet the original seller. So being greedy, I decide to wait. If I had two copies of Rule of Rose and Haunting Grounds, I could make double the money. The seller contacts me and says he's ready, but he gives me a different address. I get in my car and go. I knock on the door and the seller greets me, an older man that probably knows nothing about the things he's selling which is what I like as a reseller. I walk a few steps in, and suddenly get knocked in the back of the head with a pipe. I never saw it coming. I wake up in a bathtub of ice and feel terrible. I have a lot of pain in my stomach. I lift up my shirt and see stitches in my skin. Oh my God. I have my immediate thoughts of what had just happened. I get out of the tub extremely groggy and freezing cold. I stumble out of the house I was in and wander around. After a while, I found my car luckily, with my keys sitting on the seat. All the games were gone that I picked up from seller one. It had to be like $10,000 worth of games that I paid $1,000 for, and now I had nothing to show for it. Luckily, I had my wallet and my keys. I got in my car and drove back to the city. I went immediately to the doctor, and my worst fears were realized. They had taken one of my kidneys. I told the police what happened. They looked for the seller accounts, both of them, and they were gone. I should have left while I had the chance, but I got greedy. When you have a good deal, be happy. You don't want to be left with less than you were hoping for. I was scrolling through OfferUp and found a sweet deal on a PS5 for my son. I was looking for a new couch at my wife's request, but this deal was too good to pass up. It was a brand new PS5 with 10 games, all new and wrapped. The price was 400 bucks, which was not too high or low at all. If it was a reseller, they would have the price at double. If it's too low, 
then the PS5 is probably broken or something fishy is going on, so I felt comfortable about the price, but my problem with the deal is that it was probably stolen. So if I thought it might have been stolen because of all the new games, I'd have to come to terms with that. I know that people have been stealing a lot from stores because no one's stopping them, and there's like a 70% probability that it's a stolen deal that I'm about to get for my son. God, please forgive me and don't let my son know what his father has done. This is a fresh post, so I contact the seller and ask if it's still available. It is. So I set up a meeting and go to pick it up. I get there and the seller is a 23 year old guy. He said he got a PS5 for Christmas from a girlfriend and doesn't need to. So if he sells this bundle to me, then he makes $400 of money that he would have never had. So it seemed legit to me. I pay for it, and I'm on my way. I get home, plug it in, make sure it works. You can tell it was open, but it was basically brand new out of the box. Everything was still wrapped in plastic. I can't wait to show my son what I got for his birthday. The night before his birthday, I set up the PS5 with all the other presents around it. When he wakes up, he's going to be so surprised. After I was done setting everything up, I get to bed. In the middle of the night, I hear glass shattering. I grab my gun and go downstairs. I walk in on four guys with president masks on, stealing all the presents and anything else they could get their hands on. I yell, freeze, and point my gun at them. They all take off in multiple directions, some dropping things while others took off with a few presents. To my surprise, the PS5 was still there. The police came and got the story. They were very interested in my story about the PS5 and how everything looked brand new. Not that they wanted to take it from me and give it back to the store, but there was something else. They popped the white case off the sides of the PS5 and found something disturbing. An air tag. The police told us that gangs were getting sophisticated now compared to the 1990s. Gangs will steal high-end items like PS5s, take the cases off, since they pop off so easily, hide an air tag, and sell it for a modest price as not to raise any suspicion. The new gang initiation is to track an air tag and raid the house, stealing anything of value they can find. There are bonus points for disposing of the homeowners as well. They told us we were very lucky to be alive. When you get something secondhand, always double check it. You could get some unwanted guests. I was scrolling through OfferUp on my phone, looking for a good deal on a new piece of furniture. I had been using the app for months and had found some great finds, but something felt different about tonight. There were multiple listings that seemed like it was from the same seller, and the pictures from that seller looked all blurry and distorted, making it impossible to tell what I was really looking at. As I continued to scroll, I stumbled upon a listing for a vintage chair. The picture was blurry, but I could make out the shape of it. It looked like it would be perfect for my living room. I messaged the seller and immediately received a response. It was strange. The response was almost instantaneous, as if the seller was waiting for my message. They offered to meet me at a location that was only a few blocks away from my apartment. I quickly agreed, excited about my potential new purchase. But as I got closer to the meeting spot, my nerves began to kick in. I was on a desolate street, with no other cars or people around. I pulled over and messaged the seller to ask if we could meet at a different location, but they didn't respond. Suddenly, I heard a tap on my window. I jumped, startled, and saw a man standing outside of my car. He motioned for me to roll down my window, and against my better judgment, I did. He didn't introduce himself or say anything. He just held out a key and pointed towards the nearby alley. I hesitated for a moment, but curiosity got the best of me. Reluctantly, I followed the man's instructions 
and found the chair he was selling. It was even more beautiful in person, and I was thrilled with my purchase. But as I turned to leave, I realized that I was lost in a maze of valleys. I pulled out my phone to use my GPS, but it wouldn't connect. I felt a knot from my stomach as I realized how much danger I could possibly be in. I heard footsteps behind me and turned to face the man that I had met earlier, but this time he was different. His face was twisted with a sinister smile, and he was holding a knife. He lunged at me, and I barely managed to dodge and get out of the way. I ran as fast as I could, but I could hear him gaining on me. I turned a corner and saw a door. I quickly pushed it open and found myself in a dimly lit room. There were dozens of people in this room, all sitting at old, dusty computers. They were all using OfferUp. I realized I had stumbled upon a group of people who were using the app to lure unsuspecting victims into their trap. I tried to run, but one of the men grabbed me and dragged me towards a computer. Against my will, they forced me to log on to my OfferUp account and began messaging people on my behalf, luring them to the same location. I was trapped, and there was no way out. The men laughed as they watched their plan unfold, enjoying the thrill of the hunt. I begged for mercy. They only taunted me, telling me I should have been more careful. I felt like I was in there for weeks. I don't know how long I was trapped in that room, but eventually the police came to my rescue. They had been tracking the group for months and had finally caught them. I was the only survivor out of multiple people that had contacted my offer up to make a deal with who they thought was me. I was the only survivor. None of them were alive to tell the tale. After that horrible situation, I never used OfferUp again. Every time I even heard a mention about OfferUp, I would feel a shiver run down my spine. I had learned the hard way that not everything that seems like a good deal is worth the risk. Hey, Spooky Sooner here. We got some new stories coming up. Working on babysitter stories to Cabin in the Woods. California haunted places, some let's not meets, dates from hell, middle of nowhere stories, and neighbors from hell. If you stuck around this long, um, you must be interested in my stories, so I would invite you to uh, interact with me on Twitter at Spooky Sooner and Patreon at Spooky Sooner. Um, on the Patreon, you get access to some scripts and some artwork that I use for the stories that I make. Uh, lots of good stuff for that. And then uh, you can do fan requests on there. Maybe there's some stories you're interested in hearing that I can craft for you. So uh, thanks everybody for the subscriptions. I got 300 subscribers. Sorry about the delay in stories. I had to think about what I really wanted to start writing about and uh, take some time to do that. So thanks for all your patience and stay spooky. You don't want to go into a deal and be left with less than you, ha you had. You don't want to be left. It was a brand new PS5 with like 10 exclusive, all new and wrapped. It was a brand new PS5 with 10 exclusives. This is a fresh po- Ugh. They had been using the app. Oh. As I continued- As- It looked like it would be perfect for- Ugh. I pulled over and messaged the seller. I pulled over and messaged the- I quickly pulled over and messaged the seller. Messaged the seller. Messaged the seller. One, two, three, four, five. 
I sit back with this pack of zigzags and this pack and this weed it didn't need to be a scene to be dee be dee on this earth and since birth I've been cursed to just curse and just curse and just start to berserk and berserk shit that works in itself and the hell's in the 